Hey y'all. So we're going to dive back into chapter nine and review the section called Cutting Loose, Diving In. And I uh, hope you enjoy it. I think that this one section is going to be long enough for, um, for the video. And then after that, the next section is called The Medial Woman Breathing Underwater. So that'll be really interesting to you. And it's super short. So the next section is really short. So we'll probably combine that with the other one after that called Surfacing, uh, which sounds like a go together anyway, right? Breathing underwater and then surfacing. So um, we'll plan on that for next time. And this week's kind of strange for me. My schedule's um, all mixed up, so I'm not sure when I'll have a chance to do another video this week. Next week, I'll be back on track, um, but I will try to pop in um, if I can and uh, with you all because I enjoy it so much. So, all right. So tonight's section, Cutting Loose, Diving In. <clears throat> I'm going to read to you the uh, introduction here. It says, what is homing? What is homing? It is the instinct to return, to go to the place we remember. It is the ability to find, whether in dark or in daylight, one's home place. We all know how to return home. No matter how long it's been, we find our way. We go through the night, over strange land, through tribes of strangers, without maps and asking of the odd personages we meet along the road, what is the way? The exact answer to where is home is more complex, but in some way, it is an in internal place. So it's, it's in here, and that opens up so much possibility. Um, I know that in the last section she was starting to talk about, you know, how uh, women engage in different things to um, to get back to that place. And um, I feel like it's just a place of solitude, you know, alone time. It's like, oh, this is just a fancy way of, say, of saying just some alone time. And um, with regard to the lens we're looking through, um, healing and, and our, our um, new life, being in balance and getting healthy after narcissistic abuse, it's really um, that alone time allows us a chance to, um, to get still you know, with the divine, if you have a spiritual practice, and so that you can tune in, realign, readjust, and make sure that you're, um, you're listening, that you're uh, paying attention, you're um, following your gut, because for so long, you may have ignored it, um, because of all the gaslighting and all the lies. So it's just a, a chance to just check in, you know, and that's really best done in some quiet time alone. Everybody needs some time alone. Um, even if you have the most best, fantastic, uh, love in the world and you want to spend all your time with them, uh, a little bit of time alone is, is good. And so, um, I love the fact that she specifies here, it says, it is an internal place, a place somewhere in time rather than space, where a woman feels of one piece. Home is where a thought or feeling can be sustained instead of being interrupted or torn away from us because something else is demanding our time and attention. So this is also important because I feel like... <clears throat> You're going to need much less time away from the right person than you would the wrong person. Uh, when it's, it especially says, um, you know, where you're, you're trying to, you know, think. And I remember, I think I mentioned this in a previous video and it's true, but with my experience, um, around those that, uh, that are, were very narcissistic, it's like you could, you weren't even allowed the opportunity to think for yourself. It's like if, um, if they saw that, you know, I was thinking for myself at all, it was like just jumping in and bombarding. It's like, it's like they're just doing this constantly. And, um, it's like they want total control of not only your time and your energy and your attention, but your mind. And that's where the whole, um, like, you know, spell work comes in where they're lying to you and they're, you know, messing with your mind, making you think that you're remembering things wrong when you, you feel so sure that you're remembering them right and all of the, the mind confusion that they, that they cause. And so, um, I think that, 
Um, you know, this alone time is crucial, especially first coming out of those kind of situations to get your head clear and straight again. And then once you've moved down the road a little bit and, you know, you're, you feel like you have a good grasp on things and you're healthy and you're actually, um, you know, ready for, you're open to finding, you know, a, the right one um, to have a loving and healthy relationship with. Like I said, I think that you're going to need less time away, but, but it's still, everybody needs some time, you know, some quiet time with their thoughts to, to pray, to, um, to just realign and check in with their gut. So, um, I just love how she specifies certain things here because I think it just helps us to, um, to kind of sort this, these ideas out in our mind. Where she says, you know, home is where a thought or feeling can be sustained. Yes. So see, if you're with the right person, you can probably sustain that thought or feeling in their presence. Because they're not going to be messing with your mind. See the difference? Versus a narcissist, you're not going to be able to sustain a thought or feeling because they're constantly in control and they're bombarding your mind. Um, So that's the difference there. Home, it's like this whole going home thing. I think that the right person can be a part of that is my point because you can feel at home with the right person um so just my thoughts it says and through the ages women have found myriad ways to to have this make this for themselves even when their duties and chores were endless so i'm going to skip a little bit down here and um read the this next part it says it is right and proper that women okay it's e-k-e i guess that's eek I don't even know what this means. Eek out, liberate, take, make, connive to get. That doesn't sound too good. I thought conniving was a bad word. I don't know. Assert their right to go home. Home is a sustained mood or sense that allows us to experience feelings not necessarily sustained in the mundane world. So it's this deeper than surface level, you know. Um... It says wonder, vision, peace, freedom from worry, freedom from demands, freedom from constant clacking. I would like for us to go ahead and take this lesson deeper and layer it with, um, as we're learning how to discern the people that are right for us, not just in an intimate romantic relationship, but also in friendships and any kind of associations, you know, where we're close with people. I think that all of this right here can help us to, um, to understand specific qualities that are going to be a part of those healthy relationships. So again, let me, let's read this through that lens. Home is a sustained mood or sense that allows us to experience feelings. So, number one, you're allowed to experience your feelings. You can have feelings, you know. Ideally, you know, we would all reach a place of maturity where we have control over our feelings. But um, but we're still, you know, loved enough to be able to express those feelings, in a mature manner, right? A respectful manner. Uh, because <clears throat> a narcissist, <clears throat> oftentimes they don't, they either they don't care about your feelings or if you do express feelings, they're going to use it against you. So there's the difference there. Um, now, to take it another step deeper, home is a sustained mood or sense that allows us to experience feelings not necessarily sustained in the mundane world. Now, mundane is like your common everyday, I would say surface level um, type stuff in the world. So um, she's talking about the things that are deeper than that, more meaningful than that. Well, a relationship with a narcissist is going to be constantly at that mundane level, at the surface level. They can't go deeper intellectually, emotionally, or spiritually. They just can't. They're um, void and empty. And... um, and or they reserve that depth for the, of themselves for other people that you don't even know about. So um, she calls out wonder and vision and peace. Yes, you can't have those things with a narcissist. So these are just things to 
kind of like a little checklist, you know, of, of the difference when you're, you know, learning and, and trying to understand what constitutes a healthy relationship versus a non-healthy relationship. You are going to feel peaceful with the right person. Um, you're going to feel safe enough to, to feel peace. You're going to want to share visions together. You're not going to have to worry about your vision being criticized um, or demeaned or diminished. Wonder, um, imagining things together, dreaming together. Um, because if, you know, if you try to do these, like the dreaming part with a, a narcissist, it's not going to go very far. It's almost like they're not even capable of that creative thinking. Um, and then freedom from worry. I mean, that's self-explanatory. Freedom from demands, again, self-explanatory. Freedom from constant clacking. Yes. So, is this all these treasures from home are meant to be cached, C-A-C-H-E-D, in the, I think I'm saying that right, in the psyche for a later use in the top side world. So you see how um, when we're examining this book through that lens of, you know, after being entangled with a narcissist, you see how there's so many lessons we can pull from it. Um, and you see how home that she's talking about um, can also mean that shared um, love with the right person. So um, let's read the next section. Although there are many physical places one can go to to feel feel her way back to this special home the physical place itself is not home it is only the vehicle that rocks the ego to sleep so that we can go the rest of the way by ourselves i like this this is cool the vehicles through and by which women reach home are many music art forest ocean fume sunrise solitude these take us home to a nutritive inner world that has ideas, order, and sustenance all of its own. I like how she's bringing nourishment, like spiritual and soulful nourishment into this, um, this part. Home is the pristine in instinctual life that works as easily as a joint sliding upon its greased bearing where all is as as it should be, where all the noises sound right and the light is good and the smells make us feel calm rather than alarmed. How one spends one's time in the return is not important. Whatever it revivifies, balance is what is essential. That is home. Yes. So um, I'm going to skip around a little bit here for time's sake. And then um, I'm on page 286 if you've got the book. It says some women never go home and instead live their lives a la zona zombie, in the zombie zone. The most cruel part of this lifeless state is that the woman functions, walks, speaks, acts, even accomplishes many things, but she no longer feels the effects of what has gone wrong. If she did, her pain would make her immediately turn to the fixing of it. This reminds me of um, in the past in the book, we've gone over parts where she you know, talks about that, how you get disconnected with your... Um, that that um gatekeeper of the psyche you know i think we even talked about it in the last video um the one that keeps everything in check and verifies it's kind of like that gets turned off and so um we push ourselves and push ourselves and um let's let's continue and see what else she's got to say and so she says but no a woman in such a state hobbles on arms out defended against the painful loss of home Blind, and as they say in the Bahamas, she gone spirat, meaning her soul has gone off without her and left her feeling. No matter what she does, not quite substantial. In this state, women have an odd sense that they are accomplishing much, but feel little satisfaction. This resonates with me. I think that if you're overworked, um, and you don't allow yourself proper time to rest, I mean, just something as simple as that is your job, um, you know, you, it's kind of like, I remember having a conversation with a friend one time, you know, I just feel, I remember telling her, I just feel like I, like a, I don't think I said a failure, but I just feel like I'm not, um, 
doing everything I could or something. I can't remember how it went, but the point is, um, she was like, well, list everything out. And when I did, I was thinking, oh my gosh, I've, I've, I have done a lot and I am doing a lot. And it's like, we don't realize sometimes I think, um, we're just not paying attention to how much we are doing, how much is on our plate. And we just keep pushing through and pushing through. It's like we get in this groove and uh, a lot of times we don't realize, um, how much we're pushing ourselves until we get sick or something like that. And we're forced to rest, you know, um, it says, women I've worked with who have not been home in 20 or more years always weep upon first setting foot on that psychic ground again. For various reasons, which seemed like good ones at the time, they spent years accepting permanent exile from the homeland. They forgot how immensely good it is for rain to fall on dry earth. I can see this as being either just being overworked, busy, or um, just out of your element, even like in a... Um, in a relationship just being out of your element I mean a lot of times people um seem to be doing fine in life rocking along and accomplishing things but they're they're not content and happy and it's like it's almost like they're living life but they're almost not living their life because they're not um you know, taking that time to check in, you know, with their desires and what, you know, maybe the divine is trying to um, lead them to do. They're just not even checking in. They're just maybe um, going by what somebody else wants, you know. Um, I've, I know people that, um, whose parents uh, just basically told them what they should do, you know, what, um, college degree they should get you know what field of study and it's like I think a lot of times especially when you're young you can just be robotic and think you're doing the right thing um and then in reality it's like wait a second you know this is my life and so um you know sometimes that time is it's needed just to check in for um for that just to make sure that you're on the right track you know paying attention to your body because our body speaks too we've talked about that before um you know um a lot of times our first sign that we're not in alignment with um what god wants for us and that we're not on the right path is is a physical um a physical manifestation, a, a physical sign or multiple signs, you know, trying to get us our subconscious, just like screaming at us, <laughs> trying to get us to wake up and um, change lanes, you know, so, so <clears throat> she goes back into talking about home again, she says for some home is the taking up of an endeavor, um, for some home is a forest, a desert, a sea, um, and then it says, when you focus with soul eyes, you will see home in many, many places. Um, I thought that was beautiful because it's kind of all like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, you know. Um, it says, how do we balance the need to go home with our daily lives? We pre-plan home into our lives. It is always amazing how easily women can take time away if there is an illness if a child needs them, if a child needs them, if the car breaks down, if they have a toothache, going home has to be given the same value, even stated in crisis proportions if necessary. For it is unequivocally true, if a woman doesn't go when it's her time to go, the hairline crack in her soul slash psyche becomes a ravine, and the ravine becomes a roaring abyss. If a woman absolutely values her going home cycles, those around her will also learn to value them. You know, it's it's funny because um, I feel like I've seen a meme recently where it's talking about um, create a life that you don't need a vacation from. I think that's what it says. I mean, vacations are great, right? And it's not like, you know, life can be all, you know, roses and rainbows and unicorns all the time. I mean, it's you know, you have to be realistic. I get that. But at the same time, I think checking in with our intuition on the regular is, is going to give us a much better chance of living a life that we really don't need a vacation from that, you know, a life where we're at peace, um, we're with the right people, um, and where, 
um, we're able to, to have, um, you know, our own thoughts and, um, and emotions and a safe space with supportive and loving people, um, and a place where we can grow. Um, and, and so I just think that I kind of lost my train of thought. <laughs> I had something else I was going to say about this. <laughs> it just, psh, ah, yeah, I guess I'm a little bit tired. It'll come back at some point, maybe. Um, so then she kind of goes into, um, she's just expanding on all of this, really. She says, going home is sanity. Um, okay, now this is interesting. So towards the end of this section, she starts talking about um, when the cycle to return home is disturbed. And this is where she says that um, um, if some women feel like they can't take that time um, to themselves, that this was interesting. Uh, maybe I'll just read it to you. It says, many feel that in order to free themselves to go, they must pick a fight with their boss, their children, their parents, or their mate in order to assert their psychic needs. So it occurs that in the midst of some blow up or other, the, the woman insists well, I'm leaving since you're such a fill in the blank and you obviously don't care about fill in the blank. Then I'll just be leaving. Thank you very much. And rumble, roar, spray of gravel. She's off. And then it talks about um, a woman fighting for what is rightfully hers. And then she says that um, it's interesting that wolves actually fight to gain what they want too, whether it's food, sleep, sex, or peace. Um, so it says it would appear that to fight for one one for what one wants is a proper instinctual response to being hindered. However, this is the part I wanted to read to you here. However, for many women, the fight must also or only be fought inside, battled out against the entire internal complex that negates her need to begin with. So, in other words, it's kind of like a lot of times we're our own worst enemy. You know, we're our own block, and uh, it's kind of like who's pushing us, you know, sometimes it's us pushing ourselves to not take that break, you know, from, um, from a work project that we really could take a break from or whatever it is, you know, sometimes it's actually us and that we need to, um, to be firm with and not a person in our life. And if it is a person in our life, she even says this down here too. If you have to battle each time you go, your relationships with those close to you may need to be weighed carefully. Exactly. So, um, you know, you're going to be in tune with a person that's right for you um, in a romantic relationship as well as friendships and all of that. You're just going to be, you know, attuned to one another and um, respect one another's uh, needs and, um, you know, um, all around because it's, um, what keeps you healthy, what keeps you balanced. And, um, and that's what you want for one another when you care. So, so to close out this section, she says, different women have different criteria for what constitutes a useful and or necessary length of time spent home. Most of us cannot always go for as long as we want, so we go for as long as we can. Now and then we go for as long as we must. Other times we go until we miss what we left. Sometimes we dip in, dip out, dip in again in bursts. Most women who are coming back into their natural cycles again alternate between these balancing out circumstances and need one thing is sure it's a good idea to keep a little a little valis by the door i'm not sure what that word is just in case yes so um, I'm going to keep this one a little short. I think, I think it's a little bit short. Um, thank you so much. The next section, um, like I said, we're going to combine the next two, the medial woman breathing underwater and surfacing. Um, so this is a super long chapter, but, um, you know, why rush, you know, why rush through the book? I'm enjoying it. I hope you are too. And I just thank you as always. Um, I appreciate all of your comments, your likes, your input, your thoughts, um, everything. And, um, um, I just thank you. So have a beautiful day and I will see you soon.